It feeds an auger that channels the dough chunks through guillotines. The blades chop the chunks into 70 gram balls to make small pretzels or 140 gram balls for large pretzels. Two conveyor belts squeeze them into 40 centimeter long segments called noodles. Another machine now grabs the ends of each noodle and twists the ends over each other to create the pretzel's three signature holes. To keep this knot from unravelling, the plate then gently flips the pretzel dough onto another plate below. That plate carefully flips the doughy creations onto a 36 metre long conveyor belt. The raw pretzels now travel on the conveyor for 14 minutes, the time it takes for the dough to rise. Next, they move through showers of liquid sodium hydroxide, heated to 82 degrees Celsius. That seals in the moisture, so the pretzel will be chewy when you eat it. They go into a large oven. As they enter, flames sear and harden the outside. This prevents the bottoms from sticking to the mesh conveyor belt during baking. After about three and a half minutes at 293 degrees Celsius, the pretzels are piping hot and golden brown. They drop onto a long conveyor, where they gradually cool on their way to the next step a trip through a freezer that's longer than seven Olympic-sized swimming pools. After 30 minutes at minus 28 degrees Celsius, the pretzels are rock solid and ready for packaging. But first, a camera scans them so that a computer can track each pretzel and guide a robotic arm to pick it up. This arm is one of five operating at separate points on the line. The robots process one pretzel per second and clean up after each other until the belt is picked clean. The pretzels then fall through a sliding gate, landing on a conveyor that whisks them off to the next step. There, a machine drops a packet of coarse salt into each bin of six pretzels. A mechanical arm nudges the pretzels over to make room for it. The salt packet lets you season your pretzel the traditional way before warming it up at home. The machine opens plastic bags with compressed air. Mechanical arms push the pretzels and salt packet inside. A robot arm then places each bag in a cardboard box. So, next time you're looking for a salty snack, don't tie yourself up in knots, just have a pretzel instead. Coming up on how it's made, scissor lifts, it's uplifting stuff. And skating rinks, we bring you some cool coverage. See you after the break. Welcome back to How It's Made. A scissor lift is a mobile work platform that rises. The elevating mechanism consists of arms that connect in the middle like scissors, hence the name. They're a common sight on construction sites or in big warehouses. How It's Made is on the up. The number of arms in the scissor mechanism varies according to the height of each particular model. The factory constructs the scissor arms from steel tubes. The first step is to cut them to the right length for the model in production. A worker uses an air gun to blow off the tiny shards of metal the cutting leaves behind. The arms go into a press that punches a hole for a hollow steel cylinder called a boss. 
The boss is the housing for a pin that will connect one arm to the other, yet still allow them to pivot like a pair of scissors. Workers now use a magnetic crane to move the arm to the welding area. They insert the boss into the hole, then tack it in place. This piece will go on the end of each scissor arm, but first they weld on another boss. Now fully assembled, this piece is called the male scissor end. They tack it to one end of the scissor arm and tack a female scissor end to the arm's other end. Robots now weld the two end pieces simultaneously. Then the boss in the middle. Now workers stack the scissor arms, putting a pin in each middle boss. They also install the hydraulic lift cylinder that will raise and lower the scissor stack. This manifold activates the lift cylinder by increasing and decreasing hydraulic pressure. Workers fasten the connected scissor ends to each other by driving a pin through the boss. They secure it with a locking mechanism called a cotter pin. Meanwhile, other workers assemble the base of the scissor lift. At this stage, it's upside down. At the rear, workers bolt in a hydraulic wheel motor. Hydraulic pressure turns the motor, enabling the operator to move the scissor lift forward or backward. They slide a wheel onto a hub and bolt it securely. This is the wheel hub onto which the front wheels bolt. It attaches with a pin, locked by a cotter pin. They install the hydraulic steering cylinder. This steel tie rod links the front wheels to each other, so that they turn together. Now, workers hook up the hydraulic hoses. They pump in grease.